Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to AJ Cats webinar openings for linked doors and windows. Uh, it is based on new technology um, that was provided for us uh, by our friends from Scandinavia. So thank you very much, uh, guys, for for the, all the ideas that you gave for us. So big up. And um, first of all, I would like to ask you: Can you see my screen and can you uh, hear my voice? So you can raise the hand. And that would be perfect, uh, so I can I can see that all of you can hear and can see my screen. Okay, I see that um, that some of you can uh, can see and already raised the hands. So thank you for that. Uh, so my name is Jacob. Uh, I'm Bimba application engineer here in AJ CAD. Uh, my background is uh, MEP, but uh, anyway, today I'm gonna work uh, with structures uh, and architectural uh, part and I'll try to keep it simple and easy and fast today. So um, about a company, we're creating software uh, for Revit. Uh, it is based on our user's experience and uh, we're trying to reduce BIM stress by eliminating some unnecessary tasks from BIM workflows that you have in your company uh, while some projects. Uh, yeah, so today uh, today we're gonna speak about three main features that we developed uh, during few months. Um, so one of the features, it, it was really in need by our, um, by our customers, it's uh, extend door window openings to structural wall base. I mean, uh, you can extend, uh, extend the opening to the bottom of the structural opening. Uh, another situation is joining door window openings into one bigger opening. And the third situation, insert openings even if the ear gap exists between architectural wall and the structural wall. So we are, we are going to use a cut opening software today. Um, this software uh, was made for making openings for MEP line based elements. From now on, cut opening is capable of working with structural framing category and link doors and windows too. So um, I don't want to speak about that literally. So just let's jump into into the Revit. So right here you can see uh, can see two models, two different Revit models. Um, they are kind of the same. So right here on the left side, uh, on the right side, you see our architectural model. So it contains um, all architectural things, uh, with all the windows and the doors. But at the same moment, uh, we're splitting we're splitting um, this model into two different parts. So one remains for the architects that is on the right side, and one. Uh, stands for structural engineers that have to have all the openings at the same positions and as the architects have. So I'm going to work with uh, the left-sided uh, structural model. So right here you can see my model and I'm going to show you um, what kind of situation I have right here. So I have all the windows that are linked to my model. I have all the walls and basically all all the architectural model loaded into this uh, into this model and as you can see I don't have any openings for windows and doors right here because we cannot cut uh, we cannot cut the openings with just a simple Revit functionality then we're linking two models into each other so I prepared a view where I have only structural walls as you can see right here it's kind of precast building, and so we're having uh, doors and openings right here. So on the right side, you're gonna see our uh, our software dock. We have lots of software right here, and uh, we have a cut opening. So the cut opening, as you as I mentioned before, it can insert openings for MEP line-based elements, for beams, structural framing, I mean, and for doors and windows, then, it, then we are in a linked file, as you can see right now. So I'm going to show you a new configurations that was developed during a few months. Um, so we added three different functionalities right here. So the first thing is to insert um, insert openings, then, uh, then we have an air gap, so we can specify what is the distance between uh, structural and architectural wall uh, location lines to to the openings to be inserted. The second one is joining this uh, joining distance and joining openings, and the last one is um, 
as the setting to extend opening to structural wall base. Let's try from, from this part. Um, I will try to extend openings to structural wall base. And I'm going to create and insert uh, drawer window openings. Right now, the software is reading the linked file. It's trying to find all the windows and doors in the linked file. And it's, it gives you uh, a table with all the windows and doors in this uh, in that model. So on the left side, what we have is a filter. So I can filter by some specific parameters. I can filter by categories. I can filter by families. I can filter by types, etc., etc. So I'm just clicking on the doors. I'm selecting all the doors. And as you can see, all the all the all these uh, walls that has hosted windows or doors are highlighted right now. And I'm going just to insert uh, the family. So we have a special family prepared for you. Um, we're calling it a, just a door square opening with offsets. Uh, we need an offset to to make the opening bigger to, to extend it to the bottom uh, bottom plate of the structural wall. So we are taking that family and we're dropping all the families into into our project. So right now, as you can see, I have 47 uh, 47 doors in my building, and they are proceed right now. Uh, okay, all of them are inserted. So just um, let's check how it looks like. So as you can see right now. We inserted the opening that is extended to the structural wall base. So if I'm going to open the 3D view, the, the architectural things, as you can see, we're cutting, cutting the wall to the bottom of its plate. I mean, it is not cut only to this um, bottom of the window, but it is looking for, uh, it is looking for the parameter that 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 was offset it. So as you can see, we have a special bottom offset parameter where we fulfill the data. Um, again, the next uh, the next thing what we can what we can do is to insert openings for windows. So I don't want to make the windows uh, up to the bottom um, of my structural wall. So I just neglect that configuration. I'm going back to insert update door window openings. And you're gonna see uh, how I will insert uh, how, how I will insert uh, openings for Windows right now. Um, yeah, I have one question. Uh, Thomas is asking: Is it possible to make uh, our own family that we can use? Yes, it is possible. So, guys, if you have any questions, don't don't hesitate uh, to ask them uh, immediately. Yeah. Okay. So let's try once again. is reading the file. Once again, we have created openings and we have the openings to be created. So right now I have different different window types. I'm taking only this window. If I select that, you're gonna see that I have, I have all my needed windows. I'm going to insert the window opening. Um, I'm clicking OK and it is going, it is going once again, the same, the same idea. Okay, let's let's just check how it looks like. So as you can see, right now we have uh, we have an opening that is offset to the bottom right here, and we have the window that is uh, that has the opening right now here. Um, let's check another another situation where we have two windows just nearby each other. So I'm going to the configurations once again, and I would like to out join the openings if the distance between two windows or two doors are less or equal to 1000. And then I'm going to insert once again, I'm going to filter um, my needed families. Uh, I mean, I mean, from from the structural part. Once again, let's try to insert. Okay, collecting the data, I'm going to create new opening and I guess that's something what I need. Now let's let's take this one. Yeah, as you can see, these openings. Uh, I'm going to insert and I will use it like this. I will take the same family, drop it here and I'm inserting all the families to my project. As you can see, I had 20, but uh, I joined seven of them. So let's just take a look right here. As you can see, the opening is bigger, um, and it it is only one 
we joined two different openings into one bigger opening. And one more situation, for example, right here, we have a situation where we have a really big window. So probably we're gonna, we, got, we have to make one big hole right here instead of making such, uh, such things here. So we're going to configurations and I can allow uh, joints between windows and door opening. So after I click OK, I'm going just back to insert insert update door window openings. Once again, it is reading the project and once again, I'm doing the same. I'm taking all the windows, I'm selecting them and I'm trying to insert uh, the opening. So right now I have 42 windows. Now that will be uh, inserted as well. They will be joined with the door openings. Okay, we have 42 windows, we have 23 joined elements. And as you can see right here, we have we have joined opening together. So um, I just untick extend, uh, extend opening to the structural wall base. So if that would be turned on, uh, the, the opening would be set to the bottom of, uh, of the structural wall base. Yeah, so so that that is the main functionality. Uh, in the meantime, let's just take a look uh, about any architectural things. As you can see, we have all the windows, needed places. We have the, as you can see right now, which is brilliant. Uh, okay, for example, if we are making any changes inside of the architectural model, for example, I'm gonna take a look right here and I'll try to, for example, move it left. Let's move it left. Okay, I moved a bit. Uh, let's try to change the type of this window to make it smaller and maybe maybe some type parameters or something we can we can do anything inside of the architectural model and we just we're just saving that after we save uh, we're going back to structural model uh, we're going to manage links I will reload all the changes to my current structural model so so we would like to make all the changes inside of our project automatically so let's take a look here. As you can see, this opening is too big right now, and this opening is not in the needed position. So I'm going to, once again, to insert update. So right now I will update all the door window openings. Once again, it is reading the project. Uh, in the meantime, it is loading. Let's just take a look. Um, Henrik is asking, Henrik is asking, does it work with, uh, for pipes, ducts, etc.? Yes, it is working. Okay, Oliver is saying, cool. Okay, thank you, Oliver. And uh, we have one more question. Okay, let's just, let's try to insert once again. Uh, Monica is asking, can you also remove one window from architectural model? Yes, sure. You can remove and uh, and the tool gonna gonna understand. As you can see, we have changed dimensions. We're gonna reinsert that, and we have change position. Yeah, okay. As you can see, we we already updated one, and we're gonna update this one. All right, and let's go to let's go to the structural model. Voila. As you can see, our opening became smaller and our opening just moved. So we have all the same functionality for MEP line-based elements and for beams. So right now the final result is here. So you can you can work with the precast uh, the precast elements uh, in such a way. You can work with any any different methods that you are using, cast in place. Um, I don't know whatever whatever kind kind you're working with. Okay, uh, so from my side, that's kind of that's kind of all. Um, you can get a free trial, guys. Uh, just go go to our web page, 
um, just find one shortcut to all tools. So thank you um, and have a nice day in the meantime. And let's keep in touch. Bye bye. AGA CAD, building BIM together.